The film which you are about to see is an account of the tragedy which befell a group of five youths, in particular Sally Hardesty and her inv invalid brother, Franklin. It is all the more tragic in that they were young, but had they lived very, very long lives, they could not have expected nor would they have wished to see as much as the mad and macabre as they were to see that day. For them, an idyllic summer afternoon drive became a nightmare. The events of that day were to lead to the discovery of one of the most bizarre crimes in the annals of American history, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Anals. <laughs> Here comes that white-faced fucker, an asshole like no other. He's a big old piece of shit, wants to stab your sister's tits cause he's a white-faced fucker. Loomis can't recover, Dr. Challenge drunk again, sleeping with your sister's friends. Do you want to know about the darkness? I said God damn. God damn you fire. I said God damn. A lot of people don't know the darkness that goes inside their hearts. I said God damn. By the way, you do the same thing I did when I read it. I read it as macabre, but it's actually macabre. I, I didn't know that. I didn't know it was pronounced that way till I watched this fucking movie, though. I'm not a Shakespearean <laughs> actor. Suck my <laughs> white ass, ball. That was actually that was actually really good, though, dude. That was actually pretty goddamn close. I wish we had like the whole setup for it because that was pretty good. Dude, that that movie still fucks me up a little bit. I remember watching it. I don't know what it was, dude. I remember watching it. I got it on Blu-ray and I watched it. And I was by myself. It was a year, a couple of years ago, and I watched it alone. And it was like, I felt fucking weird, dude. Like I felt like kind of nasty. And I don't know why. I mean, I don't know why, because obviously, it, you know, it wasn't shot with the technology that we're used to with today or whatever. And it was it was an older movie, but that movie, the way it was filmed and the way they shot it, and the actors and actresses that it it I was like, if that were real, I could see it being you know, I could see it being a real fucking thing. Yeah. No. Like, and I, I don't. I know it was know, based on Ed Gein, but still. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 one of the few movies texas chainsaw massacre is one of the few movies that when you go back and watch it i mean that's not technically fair i guess halloween or nightmare on elm street is definitely one of the nightmare on elm street specifically is one of the scarier first movies that is still kind of scary today because if you think about yeah. it but i think texas chainsaw massacre is the one of those movies that no matter how many times you've seen it because now we've seen the sequels with freddie being funny and we've seen michael go through just everything and yeah. jason's just become everything too but there's something about Texas Chainsaw 1974 that no matter how many times you go back and watch it, it is still just as scary as the first time you saw it, just because it feels wrong. It feels yeah, like it well, should not be. I definitely, I feel like that that warning at the very beginning of the film when the dialogue comes through is like, is a perfect example. This shit's disturbing. <laughs> like, it's yeah. still fucking disturbing. And you know what's weird is they, they were working off of an 80,000, I think they, on Wikipedia, it says between an 80,000 and a hundred thousand, a hundred thirty thousand dollar budget or hundred and forty thousand dollar budget. It ultimately made like $30 million at the box office. I don't know what that translate with today, what the inflation is. I mean, what yeah. $80,000 would cost back in 1974, but it still probably wasn't. I mean, I know it was a lot more, but, it, but I'm not saying it was, but it, 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 it was low budget enough to where it was fucking scary. Like it was almost like, I, I know they did that because they didn't have the money to shoot like this awesome cinema type of way, but it was like almost by design. Toby Hooper was like, this has to be this very in, in the dirt type of filming to make it effective. And it is. And it's not just that, dude. It's the fucking music. Like uh, when she's at the dinner table and it's like eh, that, that fucking. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, it makes me feel, I was like, oh, oh, I just want to get it out of the way. What is your rating? I know we'll give a rating, but either way, I want to I want to know right off the bat, hot off the presses, <clears throat> what's your wiener feel like? What's no, it what's I, it feeling? I think it's a it's a it's a it's a fucking ugly and gross 9.5 for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like uh and, and the reason I say that is because like the movie itself has a lot of problems with it. There's a lot of dead laws in time, I think, at certain points or whatever. And it's got you could you could pick the problems uh, you know, a million miles away with the movie overall, but just as a movie, it it has a soul to it that I feel like no other movie in the history of movies has. Like it has, mm -hmm. it. There's something about this original movie that feels unlike any other movie you've ever seen in your life, yeah. and just how gross it is. You know, like, and it's not even. There's barely any blood in the fucking movie. There's only five deaths in a movie called The Ch Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. But there's just something about it that feels like you're watching it. It feels like Faces of Death. You know. Yeah, so I, no, I agree. I, I I would give it a 9.5 as well. And you know what's weird? I give it a 9.5, but it's my most avoided movie. Oh. I think it's subconscious. I just don't want to fucking put myself through it because it, it, yeah. it fucking grosses me out. 
And it's weird because I, I can watch Hostel, I can watch Saw, I can watch those kind of movies, and they're gross. I mean, they're overtly gross on purpose. And it's like, yeah, okay, it's gore, it's gore effects, and they're doing it for shock value, and I get what they're doing it for. But it does this movie grossed me out in a way that I, I don't know why, because I feel like it, it's so grounded in a possibility of reality. Mm -hmm. Like there's some fucking weird out there in the middle of nowhere part of texas that you could drive to and no one would know anything about it and they do these fucked up things like hey y'all like barbecue i cook that shit fresh with human <laughs> bones you know i, I just uh, that's what it freaks me the fuck out man i don't know it freaks me out i guess that's the ultimate uh, yeah it freaks me out and the music and the way that it's shot is perfect it blends mm -hmm. it together and makes you uncomfortable on purpose and, and, and it, that's what's really that's what makes it stand out in my mind. It, even more so than Hellraiser. Hellraiser is gross and it makes you feel weird too, but this one's different because it's it feels way more grounded in reality. Yeah. Like in the way that like John Carpenter was maybe trying to go with like the hills have eyes. Yeah, I think the I think the bad parts about the like how it's some of it's not a good movie. It's not well-made filmmaking mm -hmm. at some points. Actually add to the film because makes it, yeah, it makes it worse. It makes it better. It feels like it, it feels like the first found footage movie ever because it, it there's just something about the way that it's filmed. There's no filmmanship to it, even though there yeah. is, especially when like certain scenes when he's like chasing her. And like, I like when you say him. when you say filmmanship, you mean the guy that's running with the camera that weighs 55 pounds in 1974. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah it was like, all on purpose. Well, there's certain points where like where where uh, Leatherface is chasing somebody and like you see the the camera work over the shoulder. There's genius shots in it, but like there's something about like the poor the poor quality about it, the grindhouse quality of it. It doesn't feel like it's quite on purpose. It just feels genuine. It feels real, and it feels like I it's think... all they fucking had. And like that makes it feel like a found footage movie in a sense yeah. because you know like how you're supposed to find the tapes like in Blair Witch or whatever. This felt like the first one of those movies because this feels like some just like cutting room floor shit that someone found, like a fucking eight millimeter. It really does. Like a goddamn... no, that's that's exactly right. Yeah, I agree. No, I, I agree. I agree. I feel like it's one of those movies that, um, it's not that it's it's obviously not found footage, but because it's so low budget, and the and 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 the way that it looks and the way that they present it, it almost feels like something that back in the 70s or early 80s that a news station would put out like we we discovered this footage what you are about to see is truly disturbing yeah and, and they did a good like, job of that in the fuck? remake too huh yeah they did a good job of that in the remake with the opening well, one. I, was like, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know this oh dude the, the remake they did awesome because i remember going to the theater and seeing the remake and i remember people on the theater like is this real is that real footage i was like no oh, you stupid bitch <laughs> like, i was like have you never seen the first movie but I think that in 1974, didn't they present, didn't they say based on a true story or something? That I Because I know it's based on Ed Gein. Right. But it's not, yeah. it's loosely based on Ed Gein. Very loosely, But, but yeah. I feel like they were the first viral marketing if they based, if they were like based on a true story like Blair Witch did um, so many years later. Yeah. No, in the late 90s. Were, so, and it's amazing when they made this movie um, and actually like they, they did, they did people pretty shitty on this set. Like, they had all these actors come together and they went way over their budget. When you listen to them talk about it, they had no idea what the fuck they were doing. And the reason yeah. the movie went over in money is because it was just a shit show on the set. Nobody knew what the fuck they were doing. They went over in money and they went over in time. Sounds like it's something shit. that we would produce. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they told the actors, they were like, hey, we can't even pay you guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you points. And they told all the actors, they said, we're going to give you points based on what the movie makes. You will get paid based on that, like a percentage, like Jack Nicholson did for the Batman. Mm. Well, but he got movie, fifty fucking million dollars, right? But the movie blows up, right? Nobody's getting paid. They're all working like twelve. They're one one part of this. They took it. They the 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 dinner table scene specifically mm -hmm. took like between twenty four and twenty seven hours to film, and they they had all these dead. God, those carcasses. actors suck, dude. Like, just get your <laughs> lines right, bitch. They had all these dead dog carcasses around yeah. the, the heat. Like it was disgusting in there. Leatherface, uh, 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 Gunnar, 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 Gunnar Hansen, Hansen, Gunnar Hansen said yeah. he, he wasn't allowed to change his clothes. So he literally stank. There was BO and That's dead good. dog flesh That's and all flavor. this. Basically they put these people through hell and like people were actually hurt filming it. all this crazy shit. But through all that, they promised them points in the movie. And then when the movie exploded and blew the fuck up, they were like, oh, by the way, it's not actually points on the whole film. We only own 50% of it, and we had to sell some of our percentage of it to get the movie made because we were behind. So people got, like, 
fucking dirt. Well, I think you know Gunnar what happened, Hansen though? said his first check, dude, was for like $47. Well, well you know, he could have had a, a lot of Happy Meals. The thing <laughs> about it is, though, I, I think what happened in those particular instances, and again, I, I'm not saying that the studio is is not, the, I mean, it's a shitty practice, but you know what they were probably going on is a, is a uh, handshake agreement. And in Hollywood, there's no fucking way. Yeah. You need that shit on paper signed in a contract period like because that's how nicholson got his money you need to have like stone yeah. cold fucking paper and they were all like film students and then what happened was when they went over dude the 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 company that bought the picture mm -hmm. uh it was a fucking mobster it was a goddamn mobster and when they went in there John to tell Dottie. him hey you're not giving us our money he's like you don't have the fucking balls to sue me and and when they did sue him he declared bankruptcy and basically nobody got paid dude yeah. like they all these actors all these people got fucking super <clears throat> fucked over well hopefully they, they were, got paid they, they got paid later or like they got some uh recomp recompense or something i mean i know that gunner hansen is a, a he's a, a, a quite a few conventions so i i hope that i, I well, mean, he's, he's passed I, away now but he used I, well, to be I mean, he had time. been. I mean, Gunnar yeah. Hansen had been a, a few. I mean, I would never have gone up to Gunnar Hansen and been like, hey, man, did you ever sort that out? <laughs> I would never be like that kind of asshole, but I, I hope he got something. But yeah, it sucks, man. But you know, it was, I think it was a sign of the times, dude. There was a lot of people that were underhanded little bastards that did shit like that in Hollywood. Yeah. And that's why, but even then, even then, though, you got to know, like, you don't ever accept somebody at their fucking word. If you don't know them, and you just start working with them and they're like a verbal agreement. Yeah, yeah. you'll get some points. You well, might as well just like spread your butthole and wait for the big old fucking air cock to come in there because you're not getting shit. <laughs> well, the Mike Baglioni says it right. Yeah, uh, the only guy who actually I think got paid up front was uh the guy who played Franklin because he said, you know, the hill the scene in the opening when he falls down the hill. Mm -hmm. He told them he was like, I'm not going down that fucking hill until you actually cut me a check. So they cut him a check on that's the good. spot, yeah, and it's in thing. his shirt pocket when he falls down the fucking oh, hill. But that's no, what, I, what all I was trying to say was I think that like the I think what those actors went through, like all that shit, because you mad, it's Texas, it's hot as fuck. And like they literally, dude, one person that was making the the they were taking dead dogs and like fucking filling them with them formaldehyde. That's disgusting. Uh, one girl accidentally like was going to fill the dog with formaldehyde and actually stabbed herself with the needle and put some mm. formaldehyde in herself. It was just a fucked up shoot, dude. She high. <laughs> I don't, I don't so i'll smoke this later i don't think anybody knew what the fuck they were doing on that set but somehow it turned into this weird amalgamation of i think all that added to this weird that's what i'm saying that you yeah explain. that's well you know we look at uh, we look at back at something like halloween with john carpenter and all the camarader uh camaraderie that happened on the set when they were making the first movie and everybody mm -hmm. was determined to make this a really good horror movie and they were all getting along and it was it was filmed in a low budget setting, but it was very much streamlined. Like this is, you know, it, very business. Like it's going the way that it should go. This movie is opposite of that, where it's just like wild West, like yeah. shoot from the, from the hip. Yeah, you're right. It does add to the flavor of the movie. And I think that that is ultimately why the movie is <laughs> maybe why it's so fucked up. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's so. one of those, it, it's one of those happy accident movies. Like it just, you know, because it could have been one of those movies that that could have been regaled to history as uh, the town that dreaded uh, sundown. And yeah, that movie yeah. fucking sucks. That movie yeah. is not good. I, I, I know there's the fans of the it. remake. I watched the original one. I don't think it's okay. good. The 1976 yeah. one. I don't think yeah. it's good at all. I understand why they people say that Friday the 13th ripped it off. But either way, I'm just saying it's not a good movie. Yeah, uh, it's boring. But it but that's what Texas Chainsaw Massacre could have wound up being. It's just a forgotten movie that happened in 74 but like oh you remember that kind of fat guy that ran around with the chainsaw yeah that's it well what's fucked up about it dude I'm, I'm and i've always been like i think when people hear texas chainsaw massacre they think leatherface big scary guy chasing people around but when you watch the movie i think what's most fucked up about it is that it was it's the family around him mm. uh that's also another layer of fucked up in this but when you get to leatherface dude when he introduces himself in that scene when 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 old dude, I think his name's Dirk. What's his fucking name? Um, uh, Kirk. Kirk. When he goes in that fucking oh, house, yeah. and that door fucking opens, dude. It just, I mean, it hits you over the fucking. That was head. amazing. You know, like, it hit, and we'll talk about the opening scene because that was fucked up too. But dude, it just, it's just, it feels so fucking real. Like he just pop. This dude just pops out of fucking you know, nowhere <laughs> and then just bangs him real quick. And then, dude, the way his body was going, that, doing that floppy oh, yeah, shit. Oh yeah, twitch. He was like, He's a twitcher. That shit. He's a twitcher. 
oh my god, like that shit, like you're like, oh, what the fuck? I'm watching something fucking weird. Can't take when, you. When you I know? watched it, uh, I was like, you know what really happened? Leatherface was was just surprised. He was like, huh? And then he reacted. It was like getting a uh, jump scare. <laughs> he, was, he was like, fuck it. And then he hit him. He was like, oh shit, now I gotta eat him. <laughs> well, and that's the thing too. That's the thing about Leatherface in this movie is that he is just scared. And like, he doesn't know what's going on. And like, all these people are popping I, I, into his house. And he's basically just defending himself because he's fucking wackadoo. I feel like, know? I feel like Leatherface is still a piece of shit, dude. I, I feel like he's still evil. And I, I feel like he's, yeah, he might have mentally, uh, he might be mentally slow or something. He might be a retard as uh, the hangover Zach, a retard right. but i i think at the same time he understands right and wrong and i think he understands the or the, at least the basic of morality but he's been raised that way so he doesn't see human beings outside of his family as uh, anything more than meat well, so yeah. you, you, you know, but that's how you know and that's about you know you could get into the whole psychological study, nature versus nurture bullshit like that if you want to but the, i like to look at him like he's a big dumb animal that his family were like, hey, he's got very limited gifts. Let's train him to fucking murder people and mm -hmm. and and then he'll enjoy it. I don't know. And, and he does. But the thing about that scene specifically, there's a reason why uh, there's two scenes. There's two scenes that stand out in my mind. And I think for any Texas uh, fan, it's the scene when he grabs the guy when the door opens or, or you know, him opening the door. And then that's classic fucking scene. Or it's him grabbing the girl and pulling her into the house. Mm. The door opening. That shit scared. That fucking. It didn't scare me. It's weird because it did scare me, but it didn't scare me. It just made me really like. Like, I don't know. I, did, I, I didn't know how to process it because it's like it, it, it was so. You got to be quicker than that. <laughs> yeah, it, it was so visceral. It was so raw. It was yeah. So And it was so well acted because the actresses and the actor or the actresses or the actress and the actor that do that part are they do it really like amazing. And it makes you like when she bursts in the dining room and there's all those chicken bones and shit around. And yeah. then she runs out and she screams for Kirk. And then he's like, Oh, you ain't the Amazon prime delivery guy. <laughs> what the the fuck? It's basically Thor. Every time Amazon shows up. Yeah. yeah. That shit. Like it, it fucking disturbed me. Like, I don't know. And then yeah. I was like, I don't like it. <laughs> like, I, not that I, I know the movie's great, but I was like, I don't like this. Cause this feeling that I'm getting is not good. Yeah, it makes you feel very uncomfortable in your satch. But like, you know, and when is he John does that, Gruden in your ear, is he telling you that he's coming back? To Tampa <laughs> I, Bay? Just, I keep feeling like it's going to fall out, John. Oh. Uh, but no, like that scene. And then when he goes out and he goes after her, like you said, it's almost like the opening scene of Scream where like, like, you know, her being saved is right there. She can see her parents. She just can't yeah. yell. She's almost out the door and he grabs her and he just pulls her back in. That moment was great, too. And then when he goes to put her on the hook, it's like. Oh dear God, Betty, and no heaven, fuck shit. Like when oh, he yeah, does that, was, that, that was gnarly. Yeah, it was fucked up, dude. Like you're thinking about, and there's barely any blood in that scene once again, and like you're watching it, and you're just like, I cannot fucking believe this is happening. It's it's all just so fucked up. It feels like you're not supposed to be watching it. It feels like you're watching someone's fucking door camera, like ring doorbell, and yeah. you, and you know you think it's someone's on live steal TV an Amazon, or some shit. Yeah, yeah, you think someone's gonna steal an Amazon package, and they they take this girl and they put her on this hook. It's a really fucked up feeling that you get deep inside of your nutsack when it happens. Well, you know, it, 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 well, they do a great job in the beginning of the movie too, because they lull you into this false sense of security a little bit, because you don't know what you're in for, like yeah, at all. I'm listening. I'm gonna change my battery. Yeah. Uh, he's not listening. He's gonna go jack his dick. I can hear that. Oh. But uh, no, it does. It does a really good job of lulling you into this false sense of security at the very beginning. Because, it, it, you know, it's like all these guys are all, you know, their friends are hanging out in the van. They pick up a weirdo on the, on, on the side of the road, which they never should have done. Because, you know, that guy smells like Cheetos and feet. And they get it. He acts like a fucking weirdo. And then they kick him out. But you think everything's going to be OK. And it's not that, the, you know, you know, you're seeing a horror movie. So you already know that something fucked up is going to happen later on. But not to the the visceral uh, extent they showcase it. You know what I mean? I'm not saying it's like it's not like a it's not one of those movies that you're gonna be like, oh, it's on my top ten of most graphic, violent movies I've ever seen in my life. But it's just the way it makes you feel. It's not even that like violent. it really does lull you into this sense of like it's a regular horror movie. Everything's gonna be okay. Don't worry about it. And then all of a sudden it's like fuck, boom, shit. Okay, here we go. Bop it. Pull it. Zip it. <laughs> Everyone loves a slinky. Yeah, it's like it's like one of those fucks. Yeah, you know, it's like holy shit. I didn't expect that. 
I, I I cannot fucking stand like Franklin. Like I know I know you don't like him. Like I, I like him better than any of the other ones. You know he he was method acting that entire fucking time. They said mm. on the set well, he seemed Franklin, real. I mean I think he was a, one of the best actors on the show. He's being annoying as fuck the whole time. But he said on set they said he was the exact same way. He was kind of the outcast. Everybody be hanging out over here, and he'd kind of be off to the side. And what he said about that, he was like. He was like, Franklin was so fucking whiny. He was like, I felt like if I stopped doing that for a second, that I would lose it. So oh, it's, yeah, like, I get it's it, not yeah. like he was trying to met Jared Leto be fancy, but he was just scared that he would lose it. So he kept it up. That's a but good dude, actor. That's a good actor. He reminded me of the, uh, uh, don't be sad, Vic. Have a chocolate bar from fucking from, Friday. I you know what? I, well, I got, the, I got them confused because I was, uh, you know, apparently that's the guy that um, supposedly, allegedly, I'm not going to say anything that's going to get us in trouble, but allegedly, molested uh cory feldman the guy Ooh. from friday the 13th the chocolate bar guy really that's who that's who he oh, named i didn't know that I didn't now, that's know who that. he named cory feldman named him as his molester i didn't know that Holy yeah oh, fuck. Uh, but i i got them confused and then i was like oh yeah that's not that guy but I, I you know what i liked franklin because i thought franklin represented like he looked like an everyday dude like and he seemed more real than the other people that he was traveling with he was overweight, you know, he's in a wheelchair and, you know, the wheelchair really had nothing to do with it, but he just seemed like an everyday kind of guy. And I felt like a very Andy Griffith thing with him. I don't know. I liked him. I just wanted him to survive. Cause I, I felt like this, you know, how the, they talked on Andy Griffith. I felt like he was talking like he was, if he was talking to Andy, he's like, no, I didn't, I didn't give you the map. Uh, no, I, I gave you the map when I got out of the van. What'd you do with it? Like, I, I just, I, I don't know. I liked him. He just never stopped though. Like, and they'd be sitting there being more time like, Hey, hey Jim, do you think he's gonna come out? Hey Jim, I think I felt bad for him though because I mean, he's in a wheelchair and it's like, and and the, uh, you know his friends are assholes and his sister's a bitch. I was like, this guy can't even get up a fucking. Uh, he, they leave him alone and he can't even get. Up, he's a broken down porch. He can't even get up the ramp and they're all I upstairs celebrating. I hated him. I hated him, but I also felt bad for him. So it was both. Like I, I get why everybody left him alone because they were like. I'm trying to be nice to you, but God damn it, you get on my fucking nerves. He's in a wheelchair. Come on. No, I know. They were wrong to leave him alone. They were wrong to force him to come. But, dude, he was really annoying when he's like, (laughs) I like that. I like that when he he came into the house, he's like, (laughs) 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 he was making fun of him, like having fun upstairs. Uh, But that hitchhiker, dude, yeah, exactly. If you're, we've been to, uh, we, we used to frequent this bar, uh, it's karaoke bar. And, uh, I remember a few guys that, that would sit next to us or whatever and start talking and they'd be like, Hey, do you know that there's aliens that are invading right now <laughs> from the yeah. other side of the galaxy? I'm like, what? I'm like, yeah, right now. And they call me Jesus Christ. And I have to lead our people. I was like, how much fucking drink have you had, sir? <laughs> no, no, dude. <laughs> like this guy was fucking crazy. And Just like, yeah, that was exactly home. Dude. Yeah. That guy was the, that first off, I think the sign would have been that he smells like butthole. As soon as he yeah. comes in, it's just this wave of butthole. But it's so and, like, hot about everybody's copper. Like butthole. Well, no, that whole van, yeah, that whole van probably smelled like toe jam and Cheetos. But when he came in, it was just this fresh wave of butthole and uh and like blood and copper. Didn't and then he had I think it was weird, but he was like he looked like dude, I swear to god, he looked like a young Sam Rockwell. Like he, he reminded me of and then I was like, if they had paid him for the picture that he took of Franklin, would this never have happened? Yeah, that's another creepy thing that happens when he when he pulls it out and he puts that black magic. What was that all about? They never was, really explained. I that. thought it was gunpowder. Yeah, it was like whatever he did. It was like meant to be like, hey, you're fucked or whatever. But it, but as soon as he breaks out the knife and he cuts himself, I'd have been like, just the give fuck him the fucking the money. Yeah. Did you did you think the same thing I thought by the way when uh um when they threw him out of the van? Did you think of Jane Silent Bob when they threw Sean William Scott out of the van? It's like, get out of here, <laughs> sheep fucker. Yeah, I didn't think about that, but that, that would be a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, at that point, if I had been the you, you could have kicked him out of the van like Spartacus or not or, or fucking uh, Maximus Aurelius in Gladiator. <laughs> but no, yeah, I, I think he should have. Uh, I, I think I'm actually thinking of 300. But either way, I, I always think I was like, if they had just paid him the two dollars for the fucking picture. Would this have ever happened? Because he'd be like, they, they good people. They paid me two dollars, and we ain't gonna fuck with them. No. I don't know. I don't. I don't think so at all. Plus, two dollars. A two dollars was a lot know. of money back then. Back uh, and and plus, he was rude as fuck about it. By the way, he was that. He was like, "Hey, I took your picture. Now give me two fucking dollars." I was like, I was "Yeah, like, that motherfucker just cut you. his fucking hand." Yeah, 
Like you're I'll give him the two dollars. If it if it costs me fifty, fuck it. I'll and they gave him a fucking ride already. It's like it's it's the old story. If you give a mouse a, a, a cookie, he's gonna want some milk. All right. They gave this guy a ride and then he wanted money for his picture, and then they wanted to take him to his house. Next thing you know, he's he's gonna get what's he gonna get upset about next? Like you're not gonna come to my house and eat my grandpa. Like uh, now I'm mad at you and I'm gonna murder everybody. Eventually, you gotta cut it off. All right. Tough titty said the kitty, but the I think I would have given good. him the two dollars and van. just seen what happened. And then he'd be like Thank you very much. And uh, I, you can let me out right here. I mean, who knows? And then you never would have had the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. But who knows? That's true too. It would have been a really, it would have been a short film. It would have been like a really quick. It's like how to handle rageful hi- hitchhikers. But we'll never Step know one. what would have happened. Yeah. <laughs> and then later hey. on, you can come back and beat the fuck out of him and get your money back. But- so they kick him out of the van. They should have. And he writes on the van. <laughs> but now, nah, dude, these are these are people who literally take they dig up graves and serve the remains of the bodies to the people of the community, they were never going to let them go. You know, well, no, that, that, that's a point of contention because when they finally do get to the gas station and you see it's barbecue, I've always wondered. And when I say a point of contention, maybe I'm having the contention. Uh, are they serving human remains as their barbecue or is it actual barbecue? I think they take what they can get. I no, think because I think in the barbecue, remake, they make it more clear that they've been, using that possibly the leftovers as barbecue yeah so i think sometimes they take what they can get but i think i'm pretty sure at the beginning of the movie you hear that 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 graves have been robbed so i think they're actually using decomposing bits as well but they're also using roadkill and like other shit like that whatever it is it's not sanitary they probably would would at least get a 74 or below on their health score from the state it sounds like it sounds like our local taco bell so yeah absolutely like pretty much the chinese buffets we were talking about earlier nothing against chinese buffets just i've been to a couple that are really sketchy um but my point is is that there's a whole nother layer to this like i think we all think leatherface murdering people chainsaw but when you look at the depth of the movie and the sequels there's the family element which gets way more fucked up and it's almost like when you get to that point you almost can't handle it dude when when she escapes leatherface right and by the way, that scene where her where she's in the freezer, fucking, and she's still yeah, it makes you feel up. you're like, God Ooh. damn, stop yelling! You're scaring me. I don't want to fuck. Yeah, and she's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Holy shit! Call Darkwing Duck. This bitch going crazy. And, <laughs> and Leatherface literally looks like me when I'm trying to prepare a fancy dinner, but I have no idea how to cook. He's just running around from window to window, like, where the fuck do you come from? What the shit? I got somebody in the fuck freezer over here. Holy shit! I knocked over a fucking room. Holy, like Leatherface is just—he's looks- clearly fucking stressed out. You know, that lady in the back of the truck looks like me when. I only think a couple of people are coming to the family re- reunion and multiple people show up. I'm like, oh, I couldn't, <laughs> I can't solve it. I can't fix it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, um, I, I feel bad for him though, too. Like that, that family does. Treat him like shit. Yeah, I kind of do. Fuck like, that. no, like think about it. Okay. So she escapes him, right? She gets away from him. She finds the old creepy dude. He's like, Oh honey, it's going to be fine. Everything's fine. Just get in my truck. I'm just going to hit you with the broom a couple of times. And take you get fucking eaten by my, my, my grandpa. Yeah. But when he start, dude, when he walks back, he's like, I'll be right back. And he walks back with that fucking potato sack. And he's like, everything's going to be all right. Just getting my yeah. fucking potato sack. I was like, what the fuck? And th- like that guy was, that is the evil guy. And like, he was, when he start, when he has her in his truck, I think the meanest thing the movie does is she's sitting in his truck. And he's like, it's going to be fine. Don't worry, honey. And then he takes the broom. And he's like, <laughs> I'm like, stop, dude. Yeah, I like torturing her. Yeah. He goes from nice to fucking evil, like in seconds. And it's scary. I feel like Leatherface is uh, absent thought evil. And then the one that actually has intelligence, meaning the father or the brother, whoever the fuck that, you know, uh, Sam Rockwell looking motherfucker is, is even more evil. But I, I don't think it excuses Leatherface at all. I still think he's a fucked up, evil person. Uh, and, the, yeah. and the thing is, uh, I know it's based loosely on Ed Gein, and I know that Ed Gein was found to be not guilty based on reasons of insanity, and he died out into a sanatorium. I think they sent, yeah, I think he he died out in a sanatorium. Uh, and I don't know if he was found not guilty, but guilty, uh, but they, they added, the, added the insanity plea. But the thing is, You've got to be a real fucked up person to do the same, like do some of that shit. Like, I mean, you know, digging up bodies and cutting off faces and then making a wallet out of it and making fucking lampshades and shit like that. In my opinion, and I know I'm not an expert in this, I think you're a fucking piece of shit. 
and you deserve to be burned in He's, hell. I, I think it's, I, I no, I'm a hundred percent. I don't think, and look, I know insanity exists and I'm not trying to like yeah. downplay uh, cool. mental issues, but cool. I'm saying at the same time, if you do the, the crime, you do the time. I mean, fuck that. <laughs> you fuck around, you find I'm out. Gonna be, I'm going to be that fucking dare dog. I'll be the fucking dare dog that we remember from goddamn high school. I don't think Leatherface was was uh, uh, mentally incapable of understanding what was right and wrong. I just think that he went along with it because it was what he was good at. Well, what I the way I see it, though, is that if he was raised in this house, right, and there's no fucking internet connection, he can't Google how to be a good person, you know, like he's... No, they probably don't even have a fucking TV. I don't mm. think he's raised, he's born, and all they do, like, imagine if he's raised and born in that house with that fucked up family, and he never, no, I know, I mean, he never it, meets an outsider, he never meets anybody, and yeah. all they do is tell him the point of life, the point of human life is you, you're the butcher, you cut up these bodies, you do this shit, you right. murder when you have to murder or whatever. Like, he has no way of knowing what's right and what's wrong. And I think that that is like, either way, he's fucking. Well, I feel like that's villain. But, but I also feel like you could put, make that same argument with uh, with Michael Myers then, with Rob Zombie specifically. Well, no, because Rob, Michael Myers was, was, was raised in a, he was raised in a, no, in a, in not, a normal not suburban. The Rob Zombie version. He was he still was, raised in a suburban, in a suburban. He was raised town. by a stripper mom and a stepdad that hated him. Right, but there was outside. He went to school. There was teachers. There was not this. This this Leatherface literally was just. He was just brought up in this fucking kitchen. You, we don't even know if he's ever fucking been to a goddamn park with a slide in. You know what I mean? I don't know. Well, I mean, not everyone's been to a park with a slide in, and that's a tragedy. But <laughs> at the same time, I was like, you know what? I say every if you're, pretty if, girl deserves. I, to go I feel to like a you're park. trying to. I, I feel like I, I. No, I know what you're trying to say, but I feel like you're Keanu Reeves in in The Devil's Advocate, and I'm gonna be like, <laughs> can't win them all. Hey. He, hey, fucking no, burn. either way, he needs to be put down. You know, put like he's that. I, that no, I, that is a no, I like. I like what you're saying though, because it, it it is a it's a good argument because that is uh you could you could broach that subject. Like, is that the, you know the moral uh ambiguity or and I don't know how to say it. Amb ambiguity. I, yeah, ambiguity. The ambiguity. moral ambiguity. Uh, of, of uh, you know, but I, I, but I, I also am not stupid enough to to feel like Leatherface deserves any type of uh, sympathy as far as what he did. I mean, he but, he is still culpable in the crimes that he committed. So yeah. the motherfucker should burn and be electrocuted if they ever caught him. But at the same time, I understand what you're saying, yeah. You know, and it goes back to nature versus nurture, and that's an interesting point. And uh, maybe a lot of people don't look at it like that. Um, but still, overall, as the movie itself, as mm. just the movie itself, as it's presented, I think it's a fucking disturbed and fucked up movie. I, I think it's a, a really... And again, it came from 1974, dude. And you can watch that in 2022 and still be fucked up from it. And pre-Halloween, by the way. Pre-Halloween. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not I'm not with that fucking douchebag from whatever review site who said that Halloween ripped it off. But pre-Halloween, you know, one of the you earlier... Said that. Some fun, some guy when he reviewed Halloween Kills, he was like, and by the way, we all know that Halloween in what, itself how the fuck, is just how do you equate that? And like, oh my yeah, god, so okay, fucking different. In, yeah, stupid. what weed did you smoke, sir? <laughs> <laughs> but the third act of the film was almost its own act, right? Like, I think that's that, that's the most fucked up act. I think the third, the act third, act, yeah, I, I agree. The third act is the most when she gets brought into the house. That's yeah. where it goes. It, holy shit. It's a whole nother stratosphere. Fucking crazy. And that, by the way, that scene was like the, the scene they said took 24 to 27 hours to shoot. But when they're sitting there and she's just nonstop screaming, dude, they it's keep so great at her fucking, fucking nerves. Yeah. Like I, I, I want to be like, can y'all just put some scotch tape on her? Like, I, I mean, I hope you let her go first, but if you, if you're not going to let her go, <laughs> you at least fucking I'm trying to enjoy my fucking figures. Jesus Christ. Yeah, she was just constantly like, yeah, yeah. I was but like, you, know what, you know what? You know what? I think that they did really good is at the beginning of that scene is when they're showing the different angles of her face and they're making that weird music. And it's like, <laughs> it's like, I felt like I was in the nutty barn. I'm like, this is fucking crazy. Dude. At least once she should have been like, Ooh. <laughs> I felt like I was in that moment in house on haunted Hill. Uh, when Chris Catan was talking about that that one particular uh, machine that would go around, and he was like, "Whatever would drive an insane man insane, or whatever would drive a sane man insane, this would drive an insane man sane." Uh, you know, I was like, I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, that was that was, that shit was annoying, uh, but I felt like it was it was terrifying too because uh, the Sam Rockwell wannabe and then Leatherface kept coming at her, and you got to imagine you're tied to a fucking chair and these wackadoos. 
are touching you and like, you know, and you're screaming for that one that you think is a reasonable dude. The one guy that works at Cracker Barrel that looks like he works at Cracker Barrel, the dad or whatever. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, he ain't doing nothing. He can't do nothing. And then yeah. they're like, that's uh, the that's guy that, where, that has the conscience. Oh, I'm the, fucked. That's I feel like what they do is they inject the hopelessness of your situation. Yes. In that moment. And you're like, you are fucked. Yeah. Like oh, then they, you guys understand what I'm saying. It's like when you know you are fucked and yeah. you can't get out of it, that's what's scary, man. It's yeah. not, it's not, it's not necessarily everything else. It's that you are completely screwed. <laughs> that's what's really scary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like there's no escape. That one got caught in my throat a little bit. Mm -hmm. But and then they bring down the fuck like you think that that's like the height of it, right? And then they bring down the goddamn grandpa. That was and you're like, nasty, yeah. Oh, what the fuck? Like it looks bad, but it also looks really fucking scary at the same I, time. I'm gonna say something, it's gonna be unpopular, and I don't want you guys to get mad at me, but there's one scene you got turned when they were didn't. filming the grandpa, and he looked like John Carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, I did not I, like, see that, not, but he's not dead. I'm not saying that. I don't, I, I'm not saying he looks like a crusty old asshole, but I'm just saying, like, there was one because you could tell that's a terrible mask. I mean, they were working on a limited budget, but there's right. one scene when he's sitting in the wheelchair and he's like this, and it's like from a hallway scene, and you're looking into it, and he's sitting like this. It, if he had a ponytail, I'd be like, that's John Carpenter answering <laughs> questions about Halloween, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. Dude. It, because that, it, it also looked like a Reagan mask. It would look really bad. Like it, and, when they, apparently the guy that they put that on was like in his twenties, and they said they just glued that shit to his yeah. face, and he's like scarred for life from it. Like what? there's a bunch of shady ass shit they did on this fucking. What, they use Elmer's like I don't know toxic? if they meant legitimately like scarred or just like mentally because he had mm -hmm. to do that. But yeah, I, I'm not a fan of the, the yeah the production. He sucked her finger honest, with blood on it. That was that weird. was that was like I think I feel like if you like okay. uh if there was like a, a graph that went with like fucked up, fucked up, yeah. fucked up, I think the highest peak was when the grandpa starts sucking on her fucking finger. That's dude. so weird. Oh my god! <laughs> I was like, oh, "What are you Jesus. doing, granddad?" Holy yeah. shit! Because you, you fucking... know, I also thought I was like, "Is that what keeps him young? <laughs> Is yeah. that what keeps him alive? Is oh, like man. fucking blood? Is he a vampire?" Oh, when they decided, when they decided to uh, actually, and 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 when they decided to let like, let's let grandpa kill her and she's just sitting here. And oh, yeah, by the way, fucking, yeah, before I forget, I want to say the set designer and the special effects guy mm -hmm. should get all the credit in the fucking world. Oh dude. yeah, dude. They, they should get accolades. Yeah. The time and like the, the thought and the effort and the, and put on, that, she was tied up to hands on yeah, top of the hand rest, the chairs, the fucking stick figures, the whole goddamn, like, the feathers everywhere. Like the guy, and, and e even the room that Leatherface comes out of with the red with all the skulls it on it. It looked amazing. It looked awesome. That guy is just an unsung hero for horror. Yeah. Like that, he did an amazing That's job. That's what it is. I think it's the visuals that stand out the most. I'm not saying yeah. that the story is not great, but the visuals are so to, well done you're like holy shit you remember and not to mention the the fucking mask and i watched the documentary mm. and he fucking nailed it like i love tom savini or whatever but he fucking nailed it he was like so i made we made this fucking mask and we put all this work to it we did it and it's fucked up looking it looks like nothing you've ever seen before he was like but when they brought out the tom savini mask he was like that's great but it just looks like a tom savini mask it doesn't look mm. like human skin it looks like a really cool mask yeah. but in this it looks fucking real like that guy I'm all about I'm all about a guy doing his own thing but it's it's Tom fucking Savini dude like if if Tom Savini it. made us a mask for a short that we were doing right. like I yeah, know it's but Tom he, Savini but he also had a point like No I that, get what he's saying but yeah Yeah but anyways the set design and just the way that, that just made the fucking movie to me but um yeah when he starts sucking on her finger dude and then that was fucked <laughs> up weird. and then the, the second most fucked up thing about the entire goddamn movie is when they tell the grandpa to kill her and he can't hold the, the hammer yeah. there's something really fucked up about like imagine if you're just you're sitting there and your head's in that bucket you're, and you're waiting. waiting yeah and like it, it hits you but it barely like because he couldn't swing the hammer it was like hit you, hit you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was like, like yeah Imagine like, a hammer oh, barely shit. hitting you, and you don't know which one's going to be the actual fucking. Just, yeah, I feel like Jeff oh. Daniels. Just give me the goddamn number. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, if you're gonna if you're gonna fucking do it, do it. Holy shit! Yeah. You're gonna let you're like you're, you're gonna let Bob Barker fucking come over here and fucking hit me with the uh, so fucking twisted, God, man. It's been a while, but I'm just saying. But yeah, uh, it was. You know what? I really thought. Um, I thought they were gonna keep her as a a breeding tool. 
They may That's have. what I thought. Yeah. I thought they were going to keep her like you remember and Hills Have Eyes. <laughs> specifically, yeah. no, specifically the remake, they explored that. Like the girl that survives, they kept her as a breeding. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, how many bitches is going to come out that way anyway? And so I felt like in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, they were trying to fatten her up and trying to keep her like, and they were trying to like do this a Stockholm syndrome thing, like trying to fuck her up and kidnap yeah. her and make her like believe their beliefs and then keep her as a, uh, as a, you know, like literally, uh, uh, like a sperm bank. They can fuck Jesus it and then Christ. they can have babies and they can expand their family. I yeah. feel like that would have been more fucked up, honestly. If any of you out there aren't thankful for your life right now, and you're like, man, I wish I had enough money for a new car, just imagine somewhere there's a Sally, Sally Hardesty that's getting butt fucked by those three guys to create. Well, but, new but kids. they didn't ultimately, well, well, ultimately they didn't do that. I mean, they, they were just going to kill her. And, you know, but, and that was, but I feel like, but I feel like Toby Hooper wanted that to be. You know what? You know, the first thing I remember is like when he was like, let's have let's have uh grandpa have some fun. I thought he was going to fuck her. Like yeah. they, they were going to like no, lay no way that her. guy. No way that guy can get a boner. No, not, I, not well, you, you know, they don't have the, what, they don't have the means. You know, they weren't there weren't Viagra, but there was all the certs. He just he been able to just hit her in the face. Might have helped him. But oh, I don't yeah. know. But, you know, He's I'm not so I'm not trying to be fucked up with it. But I mean, it really is a fucked up movie anyway. So I figure, you know, you might as well go the full Monty. Well, That'd be a fuck. Here, she never got away. And oh, she never she got a... away. Oh yeah. Ooh, and then dark. they were just raping her over and over again. And then she was Ugh. producing new errors. See, and maybe that's why Rob Zombie shouldn't get a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Well, no, but I'm saying, but I'm saying, but I'm saying, I just feel gross. No, it's gross. It's gross. But I'm saying, would that like because that would have made like why the family's still there because no one found out, right? No one ever knew about the murders because she never got away. Thanks. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> it would just make you feel so sick. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, but God. if you ever were going to reimagine Texas Chainsaw, you could no, do I know. I know exactly what you're saying. It's just, I don't, it's so, it scares me. I don't like it. Uh, I'm not going to film it. I know. <laughs> I'm just going to talk about you swear? it. You swear? Dude? I swear to God, I won't because I don't have uh, the fucking money. <laughs> so, and then the ending is the last thing we have to talk about. But I was so fucking relieved, by the way, when she ran out. And by the way, this, this lady, she can jump through windows like nobody's fucking business. Mm -hmm. I mean, she just pops right through them sons of bitches. Like, first off, I don't believe it. I don't believe it at all. First off, uh, Gunnar Hansen. Just... No, no, no. Listen, Gunnar Hansen was six foot four. Mm -hmm. She was five foot two. I looked this up. Uh, and Gunnar Hansen was a big boy. He was a big guy. Mm -hmm. She was very in shape. There's no fucking way. There's no fucking way that Leatherface could have kept that cardio up with a chainsaw running for that long. The other... The other There's guy no caught her first, though. I think he slowed her down. No, I'm talking about. I, you know what? I'm back. I'm back at the original when he was like after he killed uh, Franklin. Oh yeah, running from him. Yeah, he yeah. would have already dropped dead of a heart attack, or it would have been true. like, <sighs> like it would have yeah. never fucking happened. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's it, a good point. It just wouldn't. No, I mean, I know he had longer legs. He's six foot four, but he not in good shape. In the end, though, in the end, and she actually hurt her ankle jumping out of that window doing that scene, but in the end, she was limping because she was hurt, mm -hmm. and she's getting away, and you're thinking, oh, fuck. It was a really fucked up scene to have the dude uh, to have the dude running up behind her and, like, slashing her with the little fucking thing, like, hey, 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 and, like, hitting her with the thing yeah. while she was escaping, and I was like, damn, yeah. Leather, Leatherface is trailing behind, and you see that trucker coming, you're like, oh, thank God, here we go. But you just knew that trucker was gonna fuck get it, and of course he hits the dude. Well, the, the trucker got away. We don't know what happened to the trucker. I know, but like, but I thought there's no <laughs> the way he gets away. ran all the way to fucking Mexico. <laughs> I, I thought there's. <laughs> wouldn't you like? Wouldn't you just keep? I would, I, yeah, I keep booking it, dude. I'd never stop. I wish he had some dialogue though. I would go Forrest when, Gump. When you can go your own way. <laughs> Go your own way. When, when Leatherface starts going all over his door, I'll be like, "Get off my fucking door, man!" God damn. <laughs> Dude, that that part when she jumped in the back of the pickup truck and she's driving away uh, after she escapes Leatherface, and she's like, <laughs> "It kind of fucking freaked me out a little bit." Yeah, because you can see uh, she's she's a really good actress too. Because you can see, I, I feel like what Toby Hooper was going for the complete meltdown of sanity yeah to insanity she started yeah. laughing like those freaks at the dinner table she was yeah. so she was so happy and relieved to be away but she's also the the realization that her friends are gone her brother is gone 
She barely made it out on the back of a pickup truck going the other fucking way. A guy that probably wears Wranglers and smells like butthole. And this all this thing is crashing it while he is like, you know, waving the chainsaw in the air. Dude, I, I think the ending is one of the best endings. I mean, I really I think honest to God, the, the ending of this movie is one of the best endings of a horror movie I've ever seen ever. You, that's And that's a great question, too. Like if you talk about like the top 10 horror endings of all time, because all you see is the chainsaw. That's it. Yeah, when he's doing the "Let it go, let it go," <laughs> yeah. and she's screaming. Scott like, Stapp was, is singing somewhere. Yeah, it was. It, yeah, it was really, with arms wide open. Mm-hmm. It was. It was so fucked up, dude. It may. It may be like top five greatest horror. It might be. Time. It might be because yeah. it, 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 if point. you had never seen another Texas Chainsaw movie ever, and that was the way the movie ended, which is him raging to the heavens, you know, and he's got his chainsaw and he's screaming. And he's doing his grunting donkey sound. And then it just goes to black screen. That's fucking scary, dude. Yeah. You know, because he, because I mean, obviously, you know, you're going to, you know, as a fan or uh, anybody, any movie goer, like what happened? What happened after this? But you have to make your own mind up. And that's what's fucking scarier. Like, I think, I feel, I feel like, it, you know, obviously she was on the back of the pickup truck and she keeps going. And, you know, you, you think that she gets rescued or whatever. But that guy's still out there, and you don't know. Now he's fucking rage filled, like he's yeah. rageful. Does he descend on a town, a nearby town, and just fucking starts murdering everybody? I think he just goes back to the old uh, the Golden Crow freezer. But next time he sees a human being, he's gonna be doubly pissed off. Which well, is dude, what they I, fucked up with yeah. in Texas Chainsaw Massacre too. They should have just picked up the story. Mm-hmm. They should have just picked up the story from him and had someone else. They got to feed people, right? Someone else was going to come through there, or maybe they send the police. Well, they bring the, the they they bring the, the the dad back or whatever. The, yeah. the But you know, yeah, I, I feel like overall that ending that ending for that movie is is one of the best endings of any horror movie. Period. It's I mean, awesome, straight man. up, it really was one of the best horror uh, movie oh. endings. And real quick, the only thing that we didn't mention, the only thing left to talk about is uh, uh, Franklin's death. Uh, but and by the way, I want to ask you this, too, and I want to ask all you guys put it in the chat, comment down below, uh, whatever you want to do. Uh, what's your favorite kill of the movie? Um, for me, it is for me, it's the opening kill, it's Kirk, because just the way that Leatherface just pumps up that I don't know, just pops him one time, the way that he shook like that freaked me the fuck out. And Toby Hooper himself said the reason he had him do that, he says, because if 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 a, if a sledgehammer crushes your skull, the fragments would go into your brain and cause you to do that that yeah. is just the most fucked up thing of all time to me in my mind but uh franklin's death dude i mean it is the tr- it's, it's the pretty one brutal true, yeah. yeah if you think about okay i'm gonna watch leatherface murder somebody he's gonna do it with a chainsaw yeah. like the leatherface murdering franklin is exactly what you imagine leatherface murdering someone should be i mean he's just sitting there and just yeah and he can't move out. yeah Whew, fuck i i don't i i always go with kirk kirk's yours too yeah, I'll go with Kirk because that that, that like because he's got to be aware in some aspect and he just hit him with a fucking hammer. And you're still probably awake in some capacity, but you can't control your body now because he's caused you brain damage. Yeah. And you just got to lay there while he drags you into the fucking room to do more harm to you. <laughs> By so the way, uh, Tomo Ogato says Drayton, Jay. He wasn't the dad. OK, Drayton. <laughs> um that's always weird to me i okay so was was the were they was leatherface the younger brother and the the, yeah. the guy that so yeah. okay but was sam the the guy that the hitchhiker was that his son or just another brother were they all just brothers i think they were brothers but there's a lot of inbreeding situations going on i, I don't think know the, I, yeah Grandpa I, was, i'm not sure someone got to i don't know okay i live in kentucky even i don't know I don't know. I don't know about this inbreeding situation, but, <laughs> but um, I can't. I can't help but think maybe dude, they're not the dad. I don't. Okay, so he's not the dad, but okay. When he's doing the floppy thing, when he gets hit with the thing, <laughs> I can't help but think about the fucking SpongeBob SquarePants. I was like, so jump on the deck and flop like a fish. <laughs> <He's doing the laughs> well, I know it's me. That well, that that scared the fuck out of me, dude. Because you know, yeah. uh, April was asking me. She's like, how much brain trauma do you think that you have to have happen to go sure. into a seizure? I'm like a lot. Your frontal, your your frontal cortex is fucked. That guy hit him so fucking hard in the goddamn head. Your 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 brain said, "Fuck it, I'm not taking any more messages from the body." Like, your brain's literally like, "Get me out of here, Mister." Yeah, it was. Yeah, Mister, that, get me 
that just scares here. me. And then, and then he, dra- the fact that you're kind of aware, and then he drags you into the back room, and you're still probably yeah. awake, and you're aware, and then he fucking kills you is is pretty nasty. Or the gnarly. girl who's like sitting there waiting and gets put on a fucking meat yeah. hook, and then you got that that hole in your fucking back, and then yeah. you get shoved into a. Freezer. And then they have a bucket underneath of you, so it can bleed out. I think that what did it the best. I think that the remake does it a lot better in exploring that. Yeah, fear. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that one dude that's hooked on the the actual Alex. hook and she's trying to get him off. I yeah. think that shit. I think the remake does a lot better of a job explaining and exploring that um that uh, you know, you're alone and you're yeah. you're fucked. Yeah, it's it's a whole it's, it, it, and it is a whole different movie, but they did a great job making it in their own mm-hmm. way too. Uh, but yeah, I think that I mean I think that's the fucking movie, man. I, I think this is a, I'm disappointed. I'm I'm upset that you're not going to do the entire franchise now because mm-hmm. this was fun to talk about, and I want to force you to do it. I want to. No, I wanna, I'm not going to do it, Mike. Unless we. I want to put you in a headlock and, and noogie you no, and like make you touch movie. my wiener. And we can't do that now. What? We can't do a man versus movie now. No, I know, but you know, I just. But you have fun with your adventures. <laughs> I don't want to go on the dark road. <laughs> well, you know what? Next week, uh, I'll be back with uh, the the thoughts on um, the remake. The remake, yeah, the remake, and that'll be fun. And then, well, and you, then don't, you, don't you are going to review the new one though with me, right? Like the new one when it comes out on the 18th or whatever. Is it streaming? Gonna... Yeah, it's on Netflix. Well, then I'll watch it. And we're going to get a screener for it too. They they don't have it yet, but they said they'll give it to us soon. Yes, I will. I will do. <clears throat> I will do the uh, the new one with you. Okay. And I'm going to do the remake. Uh we'll talk about that. But as far as like Texas 2 and and the next generation and all that bullshit, you can have fun in your adventures <laughs> and I hope you and I and I say godspeed to you through your adventures through the Hades. I'm a, I'm a But here's the thing. Uh you got to you got to agree with me on this. I mean 100%, you really do. If Texas had ended with the first one, mm-hmm. would it not be one of the greatest horror movies of all time. I think it already is, Jay. No, I mean it is. You don't think you don't think it's it's, it's one, one of the, the great, but it's I think it could have been much more than it if they never made sequels to it. Because well, I it feel was, like it's scarier the fact that he lost his entire inbred family and then she got away, yeah. and then he's like chainsawing the fucking sky at the end of the movie, yeah. and then it goes to black. Well, I think, I think that's this- like Brilliant. This is maybe where where we defer, just like not on opinion, but as as just human beings. I agree that like most of the sequels suck butthole. Like right, like I don't want to watch them. I think like you know what I mean. Of them do. I don't. Yeah, I don't want to watch some of these movies, but I need to. I need to watch them. Take them <laughs> you're, in because you're a completionist. That's yeah. like if you hate if you hate fucking collecting Pokemon cards, you'll still yeah. collect them. You yeah, know, it costs you an arm and a leg. No, it's like when you it's like when when we had sports cards and shit as, as kids and like yeah. you put them in the, like the other yeah, nine the nine slots and I got to put these in here by rookies by this team whatever. For me in my head knowing there's a new Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I've got to go through every single movie, watch it, catalog my thoughts via the channel and then like move into the next era yeah. like that way. I don't want to watch Leatherface again. I promise you as a human being if we didn't do this channel there is not a single part of me that would ever want to watch that movie again, but I probably would anyway just so I could be like that's still unless you were a super shit. fan. If you were a super fan, but by yeah. the way, I'm I'm also not calling out anybody that loved the uh, the sequels after the first one. Not at all. I, I'm just saying, like, like yeah. personally, I feel like Texas was so good, was so amazing and so original. Just like Scream, just like Scream, you could have ended it and it would have been it would have been legend. It would have been legend in the arena. But you, you know, they the did same what thing they about did. Halloween though. When he's gone from not the, really from the grassy I, knoll and like oh my god he could be anywhere no because but... in Halloween though but in Halloween uh when he just fucking disappears into the night mm-hmm. and you hear the breathing at the end of the movie that's what sets it apart for me but any either way um man Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1974 holds up today like no other like it, it do really though. does. It do do. Hey guys, this is Mark Wahlberg here, and I just want to tell you about we watched the movie's Patreon again. They got over 60 full movie commentaries over there, Nicole, plus a new one every month. Almost 100 extra movie reviews, behind the scenes, bloopers, and outtakes videos. They'll send you a signed picture and a Wham video membership card. You get 20% off all their merch. You get a personalized video message from whatever character you want about whatever topic you choose. Once a month, all the top tier members get together and hang out live on the internet. I'll put the link below. Click it, Nicole. Let me in your fucking house. Thank you.